Oh, all right. Let's check it out a little more. No, I've been trying to say, well, we should have spot children. We should, but we do. We appreciate you being here this morning. I know it's been a, a busy, busy week since Sunday. But, you know, we should be busy for the Lord anyway. So, so uh, we're glad you, you're here. And... Uh, we have a, a, a an unusual, well, I won't say unusual, but it was one that wasn't in the book. We ran out of names in, in the book. You know, that, it seemed like that was all the Bible's, Bible's characters, but it wasn't. And this time of year, you think about Christ and the cross, and you think about the characters around the cross. I could have talked about the, could have selected one of the centurions maybe, but that's, he's not as significant as this fellow. We're picking a day, today a guy named Nicodemus. Nicodemus. And we'll talk about him in just a moment. Do we have any more updates on Pastor? Update, Up, update. Pastor. Update on the pastor. So who can who can update? I I, I talked to him uh, last night and and he's uh, he, he's just ready to come home. He's ready to come home, but he's not ready to come yeah, home. Yeah, he's not ready. Yeah, his, yeah. So it's a, it's the, he's ready, but they're not. Yeah, they changed his IV out, and, uh, and it, uh, I think he said it would took him about twenty minutes, and, and his temperature went right back up. Oh, that's why they're keeping. They don't. Yeah, because he's 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 got something that they haven't found yet. So that's all we know about the pastor. He's, he's, uh, he, 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 he sounded weak yes. to me uh, yes. when he, he did that little blast out on the phone to everybody. Yes. And I think, to me, he sounded very weak. But I, I think I would sound weaker than he does if, if I was in that situation. I wouldn't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's right. I wouldn't be talking yeah. like that. Any special prayer needs, prayer requests? We we'll pray for Wilma. We we'll pray for uh, Ray. Ray. And where's the other? There's another note. She's not here. Uh, but there's those that have need for salvation, we we'll pray for them. Dan and Al Swift. And pray for Al, that's one, yep. And Dan, um, Dolly's husband. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, and Pam's still recuperating. She's Pam, oh, she's yeah. at home now, but she's getting physical therapy. She had a hip replacement. Okay. That's Pam Mamat. What's her? Um, uh, your best friend, huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we know who Pam is. She sits right over there where uh, Dell is sitting. He's taking her seat while she's gone because she got special armrests. I know why he's taking that seat. Thing. There was a lady here last night. Well, she was visiting, so that's yeah. I, that's the first time we saw her. Yeah. No, was she like, was here the first night. Oh, was she? Well, she yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I didn't yeah. Yeah. I didn't she see her needs, the first night. She needs someone to talk to. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Really struggling. Well, 
I'm going to ask Brother John if he would open us with a word of prayer. Lord, what a privilege it is to come here and study your word. And what a privilege it is to be around the other saints of God. And Lord, like iron sharpens iron, I pray you'll sharpen us this morning, uh, that we'll hear a word from you. And I pray that you just anoint uh, Brother George and just give him the words to say at the moment he needs them. And Father, I pray when we leave here today that we would be a step closer to you. Mm. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're looking at the first place we see Nicodemus is in. What? Where do we see Nicodemus? I'll ask the other question before I start John talking. John chapter three. John chapter three, <laughs> starting where in John? You know, there's a lot of verses. Which one? First verse. First verse, that's right. So let's start right there. Chapter 3 of John, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now, what is that, what is that verse telling us about Nicodemus? He's, a, he's, a, he's got a pretty high position. In the, in the Jewish culture, he's got a high position. What? He was um, of the Pharisees. Now, we do we all know what the Pharisees were? Pharisees, okay. The difference that's the ruling class of the Pharisees. So that's kind of the, where they all come together. The Sanjahid, the uh, the Pharisees are under the Sanhedrin. So he's a ruler of the Jews, which we know of now as the Sanhedrin. So he's got a pretty heavy place in the stratus, uh, in the statue of within the Jewish culture. He's pretty powerful. And it says in verse 2, this man, this this Nicodemus guy, he came to Jesus by night and said to him, well, why did the world he come by night? So his cronies wouldn't see him. Huh? So his cronies wouldn't see him. So, you're exactly right. <laughs> his cronies wouldn't see him. His His fellow leaders of the Jewish people wouldn't see him. And why do you think he didn't want them to see him? I'm going to tell you the next verse, I think. It said, he came by night. This man came by night, verse 2, and said to him, Rabbi, first of all, he's calling Jesus Rabbi. Did the Pharisees call him Rabbi? I don't think the Pharisees ever called Jesus rabbi. They called him questionable. Who are you, son of God? You're not. You know, and when he's told them, he was, they, they blasphemed, blasphemed, blasphemed. So they, he was not acceptable to the Jewish Pharisees, which is different from Nicodemus. Nicodemus is searching for the truth. And when we search for the truth, we're going to find the truth. If that's what we're truly searching for. Well, Rabbi, go ahead. The Christ. They didn't believe he was the Christ. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't believe at this moment that he was the Christ. But he said, we know that you are a teacher. Come from God. That's more than the Pharisees admitted to. For no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him. So he's recognized something special in Jesus that for whatever reasons the other Pharisees and his, his peers would not either, either recognize or accept. They saw it, but they didn't accept it and they didn't recognize it. Right. Then that's why Jesus said what to them? He said, I've come to heal the, the, for the sick, not the well. 
And if you think you're well, you, you've, <laughs> you've got a little problem, but you, that's your problem. So, Jesus answered in verse 3. He said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, you know, when I first read this, I said, wow. Jesus didn't waste any time saying, hello, Nicodemus. He said, most assuredly. Now, is he saying most assuredly that he's agreeing with what Nicodemus has said to this point? I think he is. He's agreeing. Nicodemus, you're right. You you got it down. You you're one that's admitting what I am, who I am. And so he said to him, "Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God." Now that has thrown Nicodemus in a tailspin because he doesn't know. Wow, why do you say something like that when I'm trying to? get our conversation going. Jesus said, unless one is born again, he said to Nicodemus the same thing he says to each of us and each one that comes to know Jesus. He said, I was seeking Jesus. He's saying the same thing to each of us. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said to him, Wow, Nicodemus, you can tell Nicodemus is on a different level. He's thinking, he said, how can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Well, that, that's a pretty logical question if you're just thinking it on human terms. But Jesus answered him and said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Born with water and the Spirit. What does that mean? Water and the Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to enter you. You have to, you have to accept Jesus as as Lord and Savior, you have to repent and be born again. You have to, you have to call on Jesus to save you, because you can't. We can't save ourselves. We cannot. And he continues in verse six: That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And do not marvel that I say to you. You must be born again. And that's an interesting question or statement. And in, in when he says, do not marvel that I say to, said to you, you must be born again. And because it's a true statement. None of us can be saved without having this new birth. New birth. The wind blows where it wishes, verse 8, where, and, the, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus answered, How can these things be? And Jesus said to him, Are you a teacher of Israel? <laughs> These Pharisees were the, the, the in, in charge of leading the Jewish people in spiritual education. They were supposed to be, and so Jesus asked him this question. I guess that must have been another loop throw, if you want to call it that. That he's gonna, he's he's putting Nicodemus right on the test. You are a teacher of Israel and don't know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, 
we speak what we know and testify what we have seen and you do not receive our witness. Let's stop right there and talk about that verse too. We speak what we know. When we witness, what are we doing? When, as born again Christians, when we speak what we know, what are we sharing with somebody? Our testimony. Huh? Our testimony. Our testimony. It can't be John's testimony. It can't be my testimony that you're sharing. You can talk about it, but it's not your testimony. You're not witnessing when you talk about somebody else's testimony. And each of us has a unique testimony that if someone is paired with you to hear. God will lead you to him if you let him. It's just our job to share him. Now, when we share him, we have no idea what the result's going to be. God knows. God's prepared. That person may be... Uh, has been wooed by the Lord to to hear the word, hear a witness, hear something from you. But we don't know that. We know that we're to share it. And where it falls, it falls, yes. Well, what I find is like here with Nicodemus, when we go out and talk, they have no idea what being born again means. That's right. I mean, That's wrong to say that because there's many that do, but a high percentage are not. And the reason we were led to go to New England, by the way, I was up there, and we weren't going to move to New England. We had decided we weren't going to move. The company had taken me up, and would they would for eight months they were looking, asking me if I would take the job. Eight months, they flew me up from Richmond to Boston on Monday and back on Friday they paid my expenses and I did it for eight months and finally the boss says well are you going to take this job or not I said I'm still thinking about it because I didn't want to make a decision to take it and have to move so he said well you're going to have to make a decision soon because <laughs> we just can't keep on doing this so I, I said, okay, I'll, I'll give you an answer tomorrow. So I told him we'd take it. But then I had my car there, and I would drive home once a month and stay there. And we di I did that for an eight months. And so the family is in Richmond. I'm in Boston. And the people in Boston are tough people to deal with. But, you know, we went to, a, I found a Southern Baptist church, and it was in a different town from what the, I was told it was in. But this Southern Baptist church, they were doing a program called Together We Build. And uh, they were adding a, 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 a building off, like we're trying to do here, just about the same place we are. <coughs> And uh, in that, that eight months, 
I learned a lot of things from from doing that. But this together we built pro concept. Well, I was going to just add that when he shared that with me, he uh, he said uh, he said I can sin and still go to heaven. Now I I didn't quite get that either at the time because under the Catholic rules, you go you, you never can have sin. You always live under guilt no matter what, always. Mm -hmm. But for him, uh, that was a huge statement. And um, and later I quite understood what he meant. I mean, because we're sinners, we're, we'll still mess up, but it doesn't mean we lose our salvation or we yeah, can't go to right. right. So he was so excited about that, like mm -hmm. really free Amen. for the first time of that kind of guilt. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason we ended up in Boston after this delay. See, I was trying to do it my way. I'd been for years. I was telling John the other day about this. Um, I tell people I'm never going to live in Boston. We were we were up there for six months and that was too long and we're never going to move back up into that area. It's, the weather's harsh. The people are tough. I mean, it's not, it's not what we had in mind. And uh, so I'm going to this Southern Baptist Church. I go three weeks to that church, and one week I go drive to Virginia and back on a weekend. And and uh, one one of uh, the weeks I was there, I went to a thing called Training Union. Do you know what Training Union is? I see two heads nodding, and and some heads just don't have a clue. Training Union is where you come in in the evening service on Sunday and you are trained to how you can take over in leadership. You can be trained for leadership roles and deeper in the scriptures. It's a good program. You know what happened to it? Nothing. It went down because people wouldn't come to it. These dedicated Christians wouldn't come to training union. And I'm a visitor. I go to training union. I go to this training union. And the, the director of missions for all of New England is with us that night to be the guest speaker. Wow, that's big. Well, we had 25 churches in the six states of New England when I was up there. 25 Southern Baptist works. They weren't churches. There was three or four churches, but the rest were works, which meant they were meeting in somebody's house, which means it was pioneer ground for building the Southern Baptist Church in New England. And it was a tough place, for sure. And uh, Al Ridley was the guy's name. And he says, um, he's, he's talking to us. Now, the place is packed. The packed means it had the preacher's wife, the preacher, and me. That's who was, this, who was in this packed room. Not a member from the church was there. One visitor to the church was there. That was me. And Al was talking like the room had 300 people in it. And he's giving us the word. And he said, somewhere in his talk, he says, if you walk down the streets of Boston and pass 700 people, you would pass five born-again Christians. What? <laughs> that, that hit me like a ton of bricks. Five born again Christians and and seven hundred people. So I went back to my buddy's house where I was sleeping on his couch, and uh, I prayed about it, and I called Dell, and I hardly said hello. And she said, "Well, we've been." praying about this, and we've been thinking about it. We thought we would just go ahead and move to New England. <sighs> I couldn't believe it. It was like the, the, the God had just answered all of it and pulled us together. Now, we still didn't like 
to live in New England for the weather. We learned to love the people because there were people there who were needing Jesus. See? And that's what we were doing. So we'll get back to this now because uh, uh, I'm easy to just get sidetracked. Where was I? Uh, he, he asked him if he was a teacher and, and didn't know those things. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we've seen, and you do not receive our witness. And he's talking also to Nicodemus and to others, and they don't receive a witness. He said, if, if I have told you earthly things and you would not believe, and you would not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Think about that. If we, if we tell somebody something about what's going on around and they don't believe that, why would they believe you when you talk about earthly things? I mean, about heavenly things. And he continues, he says, No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so son of, must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes on him would not perish and have everlasting life. And um, God did not send his, verse 17, son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You get that? Might be saved? Everyone we share with won't be saved. And some who come here and have joined the church might not be saved. We we could that's a statement too. That that's not from the scripture, but it's from me because of experience. I know people who are members of every church that might not be saved. So, you know, I, I applaud these people, evangelists that come and a pastor when he comes, he's praying for souls that are lost, not members or not me members or not members. He's praying for the kingdom to have Jesus uh, in their lives and they know it. If they don't know it, they can't share it for one thing. And that, that's why oh, less than 10% of born again, oh, I'd say Christians, quote Christians, share Jesus. And it, Sometimes people say, "Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not good at talking." He didn't say he had to be good at talking. He never did say that. I could tell you another story. It'd probably take you too long to do it. But how how I learned to speak before people, you know, I went through high school. I never get a give a stand up present stand up report. I never did. I take the failing grade. I went to work for Honeywell, and went through six months. I was the six months I was in Boston. Went through six months of school, eight hours a day to learn one large scale computer, and at the last month, we were told before when we was hired on that in that last month, you'll be given an opportunity to speak after on something you've learned on this computer for four hours. And they will assign you a, a section to learn. You learn it and then come in. And it was 38 people in my class. So I knew I had that to look forward to. I went to uh, study in it, I learned that I knew it cold, that I had that down pat. 
and they called my name. I went up to the front, just like this, 38 people back here. I turned around, my knees went, <laughs> and I couldn't even tell my name. That's how bad it was. Bad, bad, bad. I know what being scared to talk in public, I know what being scared to talk is. And uh, so he said, okay, we're going to let you try it again. Because if I didn't get it done, I was supposed to have been fired. That was the rule. I don't know why they kept me, because I didn't do it the second time either. Same thing happened exactly. And it waited and it waited, and I couldn't do it. We went to field assignment. I'd gone out to the field, and it was in Asheville, North Carolina. We, we joined the church there. And uh, Sunday school, uh, new season starting in October. We got there in April. October, we've got the new season. We go to, they asked me if I would help out in some area in the church. They had a job they wanted me to do. I said, well, what's the job? All you, we want you to be the assistant adult Sunday school department director. I said, man, that's a big name, big title. What do I have to do? She said, or the guy said, all you have to do is welcome visitors. I said, I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I can't stand in front of people. And I heard the magic phrase. We will help you. I said, really? We will help you. He said, again. I said, really again? For sure? He said, yeah. Took me seven Sundays to be able to stand up just to say, good to have you here. Welcome. Welcome to the service. And that, that's how it started. And, but, you know, I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it real bad when I was standing in front of the group to teach them because I had some things I wanted to say to them, but I couldn't do it. My body wouldn't let me. But God has blessed me since because people now say, why don't he shut up? <laughs> And I look, I smile because I, you know, that's not the way I used to be, but it's not the way I am. But I also used to didn't be saved. You know that that was a time when I wasn't saved too. It was in that time when I couldn't talk. I did some other raunchy things. So, but here we are. Let's go now to John, looking at chapter seven, I believe it is. Let's see. Verse 50, I think, is where it is. 50. Now, the Pharisees are sort of challenging each other now. They said, I'm going to back up a little bit before 50 because something happened here. I can't read that, so I've got to go back to this. <laughs> Hold on just a moment. I'm going to start at verse 45 and read through real quick. Then the officers came to the chief priest of the, and the Pharisees who said to them, Why have you not brought him? See, what they were, they were sent out to bring Jesus before these Pharisees. And you remember Jesus melted into the crowd. He didn't, he wouldn't go with them. And they didn't know, they didn't figure out how to 
take him at that time. He, it wasn't his time to be taken is what it was. The officers answered, no man ever spoke like this man. They heard him too. And you see, the, this is exactly the same context or content of, of the speech is that uh, Nicodemus had in ver chapter 3. No man spoke like this man. He's unique. He is unique, one of a kind. Then the Pharisees answered, Are you also deceived? They're blaming him of being lulled or wooed into Jesus. That's what they're blaming him for. But the crowd does not know the law is accursed. But this crowd, whoops, I'm sorry. Pharisee, um, have any of you, the rulers of the Pharisees, believed in him? No, they haven't. They think. They don't know about Nicodemus because Nicodemus, what? He came in the dark. Remember that? He came in the dark and nobody knew he was talking to Jesus. But the crowd does not know that the law is accursed. And Nicodemus, here we are in verse 50, he who came to Jesus by night being one of them, in parentheses, which means that they didn't know it. The Pharisees didn't know it. Said to them, now Nicodemus is a questioning kind of guy because he said to these Pharisees, does our Lord judge a man before he hears him and knows what he is doing? See, these Pharisees are judging Jesus without knowing anything about him. And they answered and said to him, Are you also from Galilee? Which means, are you one of these followers of Christ? And uh, so then we see the first time when Nicodemus speaks up Christ. He does. He speaks up for Christ. He doesn't use the name of Christ or Jesus or anything, but he's asking the pointed questions in the face of his contemporaries. Are you, uh, you know, does our Lord judge a man before he's been heard and, and, or, and know what he's doing? If you don't know about him, how can you judge him? It's the same question as us in real life. How many times have you, I'm speaking for myself now, how many times have I made a judgment on someone without knowing any of the facts? And once you know the facts, the judgment is totally 100% wrong. Oh, how horrible. But it's happened to me several, or oh, I'll say many times. But not, I'm not proud of it that it happened, but it has happened. So as we continue to think about Nicodemus, there's one more time where he shows up. By the way, what does Nicodemus' name mean? Remember, we always used to start off naming him guy and say, what does his name mean? Well, Greek says Nick, N Nike means victory and Demos means people. Victory and people? Maybe so. But that's, that's the name I found. He was a Greek Jew. He was a Pharisee, a Sanhedrin council, and um, he was wealthy. I didn't know those Pharisees got wealthy, did you? I thought they were poor preacher boys. <laughs> They're not. And you know, if you look around and you see the real wealthy preachers, you probably want to steer, we're, um, we're steer clear of them for the most part, the wealthy ones. Because how did they get it? Unless they inherited it, how did they get it? They asked for it. They asked for it, that's right. <laughs> rather than, rather than 
Yeah. But anyway, I, 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 see how quick I can go to judgment? I don't know the facts. <laughs> that answers that question. So let's go to uh, uh, John. Uh, it's John uh, da, 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 da. 19 is where I'm looking. I can't see. Let me do it here tonight. 1938. 1938. Okay. Let me let me find it here. So Jesus is the picture here is one of the, that that horrible scene of Jesus being on the cross and he had 12 disciples right 12 followers that were real close to him and they were all standing around the cross is that right no. I don't think so the only one was there according to scripture is John and John, and he had just told John, "Behold, your mother." He wants him to take care of his mother. And um, Jesus is—you get the picture of him being in total agony and pain. He had just shared with uh, one of the fellow members on the cross that today you'll be with me in paradise and the other one he's not so good he's not going to get that far um, and, he, and he finally says it is finished and he draws his last breath as a human in a human form on earth right then and uh, so then we start looking at him after after he's died after this verse 38 Joseph of Arimathea being a disciple of Jesus but secretly you see that but secretly for fear of the Jews you know have a friend who um, I met in 1999, Hindu fella. He was Christian when I met him, but he was saved, and um, his family left him because he was Hindu. His friends left him. He got fired from his work. And and an old man that had led him to the Lord that had told him to three things: Jesus is alive, Jesus loves you, and Jesus will save you. The old man died, so he had nobody except Scripture to go to. And God led him to be a minister, of, of an evangelist, if you will, traveling across the northern quadrant of e of India, a big territory, on a little motorbike, a little small motorbike. So he knew what being a Christian meant. This fellow, Joseph of Arimathea, knew what being a Christian meant, but he did it secretly. So he was limiting his service to the Lord. He was limiting it. You know, we do it secretly sometimes. In fact, when I was first saved, I went forward and I felt like the world was lifted off my back and and I was wanting to tell people about it and the next week I told my drinking buddy who was my army buddy who had come down to visit me from Washington he was in Bethesda Hospital he'd come down to visit me and we went out I didn't drink I, was, I had drank before that but I didn't drink and um uh, I shared Jesus with him. And he had one of his buddies with him. 
when they came down. That's, that's the only time they come down. There's two of them, but the, the, there was two in this time. And those two guys laughed at me like I was something weird. It was my first time trying to share Jesus. And also remember, I didn't talk before people. Guess what I did? I became a Christian incognito. <laughs> you, I, was, I knew I was saved, but they didn't. Nobody else was going to figure it out. And that's, that's a sad, sad thing. I, did, I was that way for about maybe less than a year because it got the way I couldn't hold it back. I had to share it with somebody. So anyway, that was it's Joseph of Arimathea. Now I take it, I'll tell you one thing. It took two brave guys to get Jesus off the cross. The disciples didn't do it. Where were they? They were off in the bushes peeping around to see if he's still there, see what's going on. The fear of the Jews. Uh, for, and they um, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And the Pilate gave him permission. So he had brave uh, boldness enough to go ask Pilate if we can take his body off and give it a proper burial. So he came and took the body, and Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also, you know why they put this, Who they, this is the second time they've said this, who came to Jesus by night, who? Why did they say that so many times? How many Nicodemuses do you think there was? There was a lot of Nicodemuses around. There's a common name. But they identify him to this Nicodemus. This one. And he says, Also, Nicodemus came also bringing mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Now you got to be a rich guy to get a hundred pounds of aloes and and body preparing fluids to take care of that 100 pounds wow so that's what he did so he came out of the darkness too these two guys identified themselves as to who they were in Jesus most desperate moment where was the disciples they were hidden they were not sure at this point. They get to be sure later. And once they are sure, they're sure. And that Holy Spirit is breathed into them. There's nothing stops them from sharing while they're breathing. As long as they breathe, they, they are. So they took Jesus and bound him in strips and as a custom of Jews and to bury him and they put him away in this case so Nicodemus he there's, there's a lot we could say about Nicodemus and and we're getting close to the end but Nicodemus in did you know I want to give you a little sidebar a tad bit of information after the Civil War, when the blacks were um, freed, you know how many blacks were named Nicodemus, the babies? Nicodemus came out of the darkness. They were Christians, but they were in darkness. These, the reason they were in darkness is because some of the owners wouldn't allow them to read, wouldn't give them a Bible to read, but they still read and they still believe. Some did read, that they read to the others, and they believed. So Nicodemus was a popular name, and uh, they named churches for, for towns for it. When they settled in little towns and started growing, they, they did all those things. So Nicodemus was thought of in different ways about different, different groups of people. But Nicodemus is a reflection of who we can be. 
we might start off in the dark, believing in the dark, but we need to come out into the light and climb up that tree to get Jesus off the, off the tree and, and get him properly taken care of. Because that's, um, that's what we have to do. We have to, we have to share him through our witness and we're to share him from our heart because that's where the witness comes from it's from your heart if you got it here and not here it's going to be real hard to share it because you you won't won't want to do it because you say I can't remember all the words I can't do this and I can't do that and so I won't do anything and uh so take it from one who's had a hard time starting to talk. Now to get me to shut up is a hard thing to do. I know that. And, uh, but we, we, we can see Jesus. And we can see what his, what his, he's given us opportunities to be in his work and to share while, while we have time. And we have time until he comes. And like, um, Brother John said earlier this week, the scriptures lead us to believe that after Israel was reinstated, it's in this generation we'll see the end. Hmm, that's good. It's good if you know him. And other people say, not so good. I ain't there yet. Well, time to get there. That's what we have to do. It's time to get there at that point. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we've had this morning. We pray, Father, that as we've studied this life of Nicodemus, not a lot has been given to us on him. I mean, there is more than some, but not enough to make really good background tests and so forth of, of his life. But we know he came out of the shadows and he came to stand up for you when others were not. Give us that same spirit, Lord, to stand up for you when others do not. And we thank you that for these that have come this morning. We pray that as we leave, we might seek to share in every, any way we can, letters, notes, tracks, but most of all, help us to speak the word from our heart. And we thank you and praise you, and we pray in Jesus' precious name and for his sake. Amen.